lots of mixed reactions, especially with uh, the presence of blood cards. What do you do about that? When I mentioned Ojuku, I was rolling on my bed when I heard that. Which goes to show that we agree that in all or with all due respect to every single leader that has come to this country, we have seen clearly that the Igbos have been marginalized. There's no doubt about that. But the way the Igbos are going about it is wrong. And one thing I don't like them for, I have a lot of Igbo bro brothers, those who my father who passed through my father, uh, particularly those who I learned law from. A lot of them were Igbos. Uh, late B. Donu, uh, Mr. Nemeka Amechina, um, Mr. Edwin Anikwem, and also my dad's uh, son, Mr. Adundu Guzo. They're all Igbos. And uh, all the time I spent with them closely, there was no discrimination of any, any sort. What my mom would feed me with is what they would feed any of these guys with whenever I go around with my dad. But this issue of Biafra, it's a threat to our territorial integrity. And I believe every Igbo man should go and listen to all the speeches about Ojuku, the man who I believe successfully brought, gave Biafra a form. And they should follow everything. That will give them the summary of what Biafra was and what it should no longer be. We are all Nigerian now. We should all stick together as Nigerian. Let all the old Igbo leaders the selfish ones now calling for restructuring. First come and tell us what they did for the Igbos. If you go to Igbo land now, there's a lot of, uh, how will I put it, uh, rape on the society. There's nothing in that place. Meanwhile, you find in the southwest, in the north, in Abuja, a lot of Igbo industrialists who have made billions of money. None of them have decided to go back home to invest. The only ones who are back home are the literate, uh, with all due respect, the Inewi traders, or the traders who have made a lot of money. But those ones, they have a limited scope as to what you can do with um, industry, how you can uh, make people gainfully employed. But those who are intelligent, once they get what they want, they forget the rest. So our vice, uh, Mr. Namdi Kanu, who I look at as a brother, I understand his agitations, but he should change his view. Don't go endangering the lives of these people because uh, anything Biafra goes against Nigeria. And first and foremost, Namdi Kanu is a Nigerian before a Biafra. Second of all, he should form himself into little groups. Young people, go to the government. This is what we need in this place. We have been marginalized, we have been this, we have been that, because the leaders have not done it for them. Even Chief Emeka uh, Anyoku, with respect, who's talking about restructuring now. What did he do? He was Secretary General of the um, Commonwealth for how many years? I don't think he did anything for the evils. He left them high and dry. So Nam Kanu should stop this Biafra thing and think as a Nigerian and walk with his fellow Nigerians. Who are my brothers? Who are the Easterners? Southeast, South, South. Let's maintain peace in this country because if we go to war now, hmm, what, what, we, what, we, what we are seeing in uh, places like uh, Syria, God forbid, my war will happen. You might think you have an upper hand, you'll be surprised. I'm praying that uh, this war between uh, North Korea and the US won't happen because we are the underdogs. We are the ones who suffer. We are the ones who have not much development. Although we have brilliant people, uh, pockets of them all around, but we'll be the ones to suffer. So my advice to Nam Dikanu is you have to rethink. He has made his point. Now the next thing is for him to go to the National Assembly. What do you want to do for the Igbos? They have been productive. They have done all sorts of things in this country. See how you're going to develop Igbo land. What are the reparations you're going to give us, those who suffer during the Biafra War? That's all. Yeah, I mean, different sections of the country, in fact, the leadership have called mm. for restructuring. What is restructuring from your own perspective? The only one I can agree with is the devolution of powers. That's where every state would have uh, the control and use of its resources. And uh, you can give uh, some sum of tax to the center. 
But the remainder ones these politicians are calling for, I don't agree. I'm sorry. Uh, I've heard so many awkward uh, suggestions uh, about um, us going back to the regions. Which governor will give up a solution to go and be under a fellow governor as the head of a region? Those were in those days. Now everybody has had the opportunity of becoming an authority unto themselves, a CEO of a state. And I'll tell them to go back to regions. No, I don't. If you go back to 1963 uh, constitution, no. The best which my dad agitated for when I was alive is that we should have a sovereign national conference. Let all the 416 ethnic groups uh, or tribal groups pick representatives. Let's use that national assembly to agitate. There can be days they come, there can be days the National Assembly sits. Simple arrangement. But why you keep uh, saying, I uh, hey, want restructuring? Because what the Ibus want is, oh, we want, uh, to be, we want to be a president anytime we call on it. Once we are qualified, everybody is qualified. Yorubas are qualified. I will give us the depth, the length and depth of uh, intellectualism. And we have proven it world over. The Ibos have the business industrial acumen. They've picked up on intellectualism as well. The Houses were given power by the British. But our own agreement is what we discuss and then form our own constitution. Not what we're doing now or using now. That constitution was formed by IBB and pushed it to Absalom to sign it. It's not a constitution, it's IBB and Absalom's constitution. So the fallacies of this, uh, we, the people of Nigeria, nobody discussed Nigeria with any of them. So you are of the opinion, based on what the president said, that Nigeria's unity is settled and not negotiable? Well, for now it is settled until we discuss further. So it is negotiable? Of course it's negotiable. We have to negotiate. And I blame, I'm sorry to say, I blame the communications unit of the president. They put all these um, quagmires, which we're in now, in focus. The president was abroad. Yes, we know he has transmitted power, but you're still the elected president of the people. You are allowing him to visit all sorts of uh, different, uh, in quote, important people. We that um, uh, elected him, he didn't have one voice to say anything to us. And when he eventually did, it was a tape-recorded message. And he spoke in Hausa. So what are the people around him doing? And the problem we're having now with this president, because I look at him as a starting point for Nigeria, for now until we discuss and form our own constitution. For the 16 years of rape which we had by the old party, the PDP, I'm not partisan in any way because I don't see any manifesto or any ideology with any of the two parties. Everybody decided, no, 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 no. Let's do away with these people. Let's start with son of integrity. And the man did well. He chose people of experience. Oh, you are an experienced governor. You would know how to handle this. You are an experienced senator. You are but all of them now seems as if uh, they don't know what they are doing. Maybe because they couldn't get in there and load their pockets quickly. They are men of experience. They are men who should know what to do. They are the ones putting Buari in this problem he is in. And it's the politicians that are creating this divide. This uh, uh, north-south, uh, Muslim-Christian divide. I'll give you uh, an example. During good luck, a village, Jonathan's six years, there was no agitation for Biafra. There was no restructuring. And uh, the so-called National Assembly, uh, or let me, uh, this um, Constituent Assembly, which uh, uh, good luck put together where they brought in uh, some suggestions, the 2014 thing. He did not see any logic or reason to put it in effect while he was there, despite the fact that he was the one that put it together. He left. You now want to impose it on another person. And those things, I'm sorry, that assembly was not the representation of. Um, Nigerians. We're about 191 million people now. I mean, uh, the, the fellow who came from my state, I'm not even sure 
he has ever had uh, the opportunity of speaking to a crowd of 20 youths, talkless of the community. You know, they just put all sorts of people, paid them money, and they came out with something, uh, 18, uh, they should form 18 more states. I mean, it's ludicrous. So for us, we would negotiate when things are stable. But the National Assembly too should start working. But we are very, very serious about corruption and reorganizing the economic uh, institutions of the country. Yeah, that takes the basic source of national assembly. Yeah. The president has said that though there are legitimate concerns, the national assembly and the national council say that it's a legitimate and appropriate body for national discourse. I mean, based on the present national assembly we have, would you say that this president talks? With this crop, we are in trouble. With Saraki at the hands of affairs, we are in serious trouble. If not for political uh, outplay of certain factors, Saraki should be in jail now because he has violated a major crucial dictate of the Constitution, which states that you must state your resources before you go in with the Code of Number. And you must also state it on your way out. He made a false declaration. That is tantamount to perjury. And he made it on an uh, affidavit. So for that alone, he should be in jail. I don't know what politics transpired at the Code of Conduct Tribunal. I don't want to know. Because uh, it's uh, a give or take situation. Uh, give, we do this, and then you take that. It was uh, more or less, in my own view, gambling. But with Saraki at the help of our flares, I know he's a lazy man. I know him well. I know of his antecedents in England. He was a the doctor in England, all those places where his dad just managed to fit him in so that he'll have a record. If Nigeria was based on records of achievement, Saraki wouldn't even be a senator. Talk less of being a Senate president. But with that, with the, a lot of people have told me to say, ah, Mohammed, why is he paying you? The man was uh, uh, acquitted at the Code of Conduct Tribunal. Are you saying you know better than that? So let's leave that now. Let's look at what the National Assembly will now do. Because if Saraki doesn't give the signal, Dugara won't move. And Dugara is in the pocket of Saraki. From the way we see everything, we're in trouble with the National Assembly, the whole 456 of them. So, well, the president, that, what the president said is a very tall order, but I'm yet to see. There are so many laws there which they've not uh, put in place. But laws affect them. They can give two, three readings in, in less than a sitting and pass it quickly. So we have, we're in trouble with the people we have elected at the Senate and at the Federal House of Reps. Now, as for the states, <laughs> is the signal of the governor that the State House of Assembly look to. I'll give you an example. Or your state. That man should be in handcuffs now. Ajimobi. He should have been impeached. He should be in jail now. All his assets should have been seized. That's a man that has single-handedly destroyed education in your state. Lautech has been on uh, strike now for, I think, eight to ten months. Mm -hmm. You have wrecked the lives of those young people. And when he went there, he went, ah, I'm the constitutional authority. You must still recognize me. She nini not in tea. School ni. When we are saying, some of you, some of you, oh, you can me little respect for constituted authority, no matter what. No matter what, three way member there will be eight months of what? A Nicola T school now. So what? Ah, when I saw that, I said, "Oh my God! Ah, God, why did you do this to me? Why didn't you make me a student when this man said this rubbish? Then he will have understood what what that statement means. 
and the implication of that statement, you should not have left that place alive. But our people, I'm sorry, because in our own time, we were in the military era. My dad was facing them legally. We were facing them physically. He would not have left that place alive. But you know the kind of students we have now, maybe they are looking for a settlement one way or the other. They're not thinking about their own future. He has finished what he has to do. He's a governor. Because of the reputation his father had, that's why he became a governor. His dad was all the, the staunch our men. And they believed that, oh, what you see in the son, you can always see in the father, you can always see in the son. That's why I was elected. Otherwise, he's a worthless individual, as far as I'm concerned. He has wrecked that state. And until he makes amends, from the dreams I had about Oyo State and the future, until he makes amends, ten generations behind that Ajibon Bobby name will continue to pay for it. That little mistake he has made now within these eight years. Ten generations will pay for what he has done. No investment in that state. If it has become more like uh, the old uh, Yanopaja Road, all those uh, old muddy ways, what I will put in there is what is still remains there. You go to one area, build a bridge of two kilometers. You give a speech, everybody hails you. You go back home. You go and settle who you want to settle. Or you say people who are those who, first of all, in this, uh, in Yoruba land, created the first established system of government. The old Oyo Messi under the old Alafi. So if he thinks he does, if he, do, he thinks uh, he, he's outsmarting them, I feel very sorry for him. Because he can't run anywhere unless he's going to go to Lebanon where his wife is from and hide there. And until he decides he's not going to come back to Nigeria. I trust an average Oyo man. Let's leave that. Another person who is going to suffer the same fate is Oji Uzokalu, who wants to become president after destroying your own street. He's going to use half of his wealth to go back there and repair all the damage he has done, whether there's a serving governor or not. He doesn't do it, his name will be cost in that place. But for the Southwest, we should stop this Oduar Republic nonsense. We are far more over and above that. Even if others are doing it, at least our will set us on a higher plane. We are good as advisors, we are good as nation builders, although we had a mistake which was Obasanjo, but uh, we've had him, his come has gone. Uh, we, we lost the chance of uh, making uh, our president, we lost the chance of making Abiola president. Let's, let's look to the future. We don't know who is coming next. But as, of, uh, as for Buari now, I think those who he has chosen should do their work. Particularly this uh, very short man, uh, Ngigi, who is very arrogant. He talks to people as if uh, they are your house boys. Uh, bankers should stop uh, doing this. Otherwise, he withdraw all their licenses. <laughs> it's a pity he didn't try it. He will have paid for, <laughs> he will have paid damages with his entire life his entire life's inheritance. So he, he doesn't know the job. Remove him. The old man, Adamo Adamo, was a, maybe a secretary of a PAMSEC, 1973, when they changed the currency. What is he still doing here? The man, I, the brain is so fried, I don't think he knows the, uh, what tool is now. That's how man should not be. That's one mistake Buari made. Put him to, um, look at this man too. Uh, Minister for Agriculture, for God's sake. Ube, what is Ube going to do that he, he didn't have the opportunity of him when he was a minister? Saraki Senior interviewed him as a minister when he was Senate leader. Saraki Junior again interviewed him again 30 something years after. Come on. What's he looking for? So, there are you now calling uh, a cabinet to shop? I'm calling a Cabinet cleansing is not a shuffle. If it's a shuffle, you remove him from this place, put him there. Cleansing. Adamu Adamu should go. He's more he cost, uh, causing this, uh, this ASU strike. And that ASU strike should not have come about. Here and then again. They should sack the two of them. They're not. Uh... And uh, this man who we don't know whether he's dead or alive, uh, Minister for Science and Technology, Onu. He just wears a cap, white cloth. 
Of his duty. Ah, well done. Ah, good evening. He has not taken one step in that ministry. All I see that he has done. Oh, please help us call the Japanese. Let them help us come and uh, educate on this. Uh, call the Germans. Let them come and set this one up. What about the indigenous Nigerians? Even your own Igbo people who are so bad. There's a young man who has uh, built a play from scraps. What have you done to promote that young man? Nothing. So those men, let them go. The old ones, once they are above 70, let them go. I'm shocked that uh, Bonfash, who is the man I have so much love for, you got into the power ministry. The first thing you're talking about is uh, they owe so much debt. Doesn't America owe debt? How many people have we paid? Even the debt, if you trace this debt, is from the income of Nigeria, not from the hands of those investors. You had an independent power plant in Lagos, which we all enjoyed. Why not create something like that in Abuja? You are the ministry, minister. Give a recommendation to the president. Sir, I think we should change the laws. Make a proposition to the National Assembly. Let the state provide its own electricity. And the center will take the tax. Period. Instead of getting there and telling us, uh, the investors, uh, Disco, uh, Jenko, what's the business with Disco, Jenko? I want to put on light and make sure there's light in my house. I want investors to come into this country and set up. Why do you think Singapore is developed? There's light. Malaysia is developed. There's light. South Korea, that we used to give money. There's light. Fars, sky, millions of skyscrapers. That is what is developing here, destroying our developments here. There's no light. About so you ate what he could eat. IBB ate what he could eat when he was a military head of state. We are still experiencing the same woes. I get in there telling us, oh, investors, what's my business with investors? So if you know you cannot do it, get the advice of the people. We have so many professors of electricity. We have so many people, professors of metallurgy. We have professors of uh, petrology. Those ones who can tell you, uh, this mineral in this soil can generate so much radiation. This can do this, that can do that. We can build our own turbines here. Not coming to tell us so you owe somebody. Yes, oh, what, what, what. even me, I owe money now. So, I mean, I was, it was one I was shocked about. But the rest, they've not proven themselves. They're the one making this president look bad. And now they're giving the so-called opposing party, the PDP party, all sorts of opportunities to say all sorts of nonsense. But I consider this man a new start. If we know to be serious, and those ministers know they want to work, this one year, I'm not counting the 2019, this one year from 2017 to 2018 is enough for us for them to change everything. They are all experienced men. They know what is happening. There's enough money to go around. By this uh, one, uh, this uh, trade and mi industry minister, who who helped MTN take out 10.9 billion dollars out of this country. Now he's there. He's giving us a story and a economics lesson. It's, it's sad. They should all have everything. Where they want to serve this country, or not? If not. Uh, Buhari should wipe everybody and those we expected that will work. The young girl they put in finance is <laughs> just keeping all sorts of. Anyway, uh, I think uh, Buhari should think about that seriously. Uh, I have three suggestions for him. One is the man who fled GTB, Faladiola. Remove that young girl and put Faladiola there. We need competent people, not a young girl that will just be talking all sorts of economics and financial jargon. Someone who has who knows what it is to build a financial, a fiscal, and economic uh, a stable standpoint in this country. Get that girl out of the place and stop wasting everybody's time. If he knows he's serious, so put some like Fadiola there. That's a man who set up uh, a bank which has spread and is still one of the first, uh, I'll say one of the first 10 banks in Africa. Put him there as Minister for Finance. We need to get people who are cerebral, not because uh, Amosu is a president, is my friend, uh, president, this is my own quota. No, let's stop all that. All that gubernatorial quota has put us in this mess now. So we need competent people.